Hey guys, welcome to DevTech Finance and this video is about the types of leverages in financial management. So if you were following my sessions, we were discussing in the previous session about the leverage analysis. There we saw about various types of leverages. Now we were covering those leverages in details and we would see that with the help of some numerical examples. So let's get started with types of leverages in financial management. So the first one was operating leverage which arised because of the presence of the fixed operating cost which need to be paid in business to run the business for longer period of time. What, whatever the cost is required and that is fixed in nature either to acquire assets or to make the payment on monthly basis either salary or rent whatever you are using as a fixed asset and that is recurrible in nature that is fixed in nature. So all those costs gives a rise to operating leverage and then we looked after the financial leverage financial leverage occurred because of the presence of fixed financial cost the concept is same leverage occurs because of the presence of the fixed cost because fixed cost involves a huge amount of money that is the cost which you put in your business to run for a longer period of time that is fixed in nature to acquire building to acquire all the equipments all the assets and to make the monthly payments for the maintenance whatever so all these costs which are fixed in nature involve some kind of burden some kind of debt on the business this is what we termed as leverage and uh, that is why we categorized it in operating as well as financial leverage so financial leverage was uh, fixed in nature in financial terms it was the interest expenses like if the business has borrowed if it has taken some loan to start up the business to put the money to start uh, the capital flow in the business so whatever reason if the borrowings were there if the debt was there there need to be paid certain interest expenses on that interest expenses which are fixed in nature which are repetitive in nature we need to be paid every month or likewise whatever is the time period so that gave a rise to financial leverage in the business and then we looked after the combined leverage which was a combination of operating as well as financial leverage which keeps us a over which keeps us an overall picture of the business and how leveraged a firm is how burdened a firm is what is its what is its obvious responsibilities which it need to be paid at a certain fixed period of time so that is what we covered in combined leverage then we looked after certain formulas where the sales minus variable cost was equal to contribution and after the deduction of fixed cost from contribution we arrived at earning before interest and tax when we deducted the interest from our EBIT we arrived at earning before tax which is EBT or also referred as PBT that is profit before tax and after the tax deductions we arrived what is called as the net profit for the business this profit is what can be distributed to the shareholders this is the shareholders fund or the business uh, or the business firm which can be invested in the business after uh, after repaying all the obligations whether in the form of interest whether in the form of tax whatever profit is profit is left for the business that is called it earning after tax or profit after tax or net profit and then we saw the formula of earning per share which was like earning after tax divided by the number of shares we also looked at the formulas of degree of operating leverage which was contribution divided by EBIT and when we talk in terms of percentage change so whatever was change in the sales like increase or decrease whatever change was happening in the sales of our business because of that if some impact was happening on our EBIT on our earning so that was showing the degree of operating leverage. For degree of financial leverage we saw EBIT divided by EBT and this was because the presence of the fixed financial cost which was interest expenses. So whatever changes were happening in our net profit and our earning per shareholders divided by the change in EBIT. So whatever changes in EPS was happening because of the changes in the earning before interest and tax that gave a rise to the degree of financial leverage. 
Then we looked at the degree of combined leverage, which was a product of operating leverage into financial leverage. And there's also one formula that is percentage change in EPS divided by percentage change in sales. So as you can see, it is a combination of both operating and financial leverage. Thus, it gives an overall picture of the business in terms of the its leveraged position. So whatever changes is happening in sales, if that changes in sales is impacting your EPS, that is earning per share, which is impacting your share price. So that is degree of combined leverage. Now we will try to understand how to calculate the degree of operating financial and combined leverage with the help of few examples. So just try to understand in particular it has given units. So these units are the products being manufactured in your business and uh, suppose it is 50,000 units being manufactured which is having a fixed cost of dollar ten thousand and then there is variable cost with the variable cost is given in per unit. Yani uh, it means for one unit the variable cost is dollar zero point two zero and the interest expenses is dollar two thousand then the selling price per unit is dollar zero point five zero now we would see how we would move forward to calculate all the leverages you i hope you understand like we are producing fifty thousand products and uh, to acquire the assets whatever uh, to acquire uh, all the to pay the salaries to pay the rent whatever the cost incurred in our business is dollar ten thousand and then there is a variable cost which is dependent on the production level of our business so how much we are producing how much units we are producing it will depend on that so variable cost is 0 0.20 per unit of our production and the interest expense was 2000 it means we have borrowed something we have borrowed some funds to invest in our business to run our business smoothly and thus the interest expense which we have to pay which we have to pay and which is obligatory get three in nature that is 2000 and the selling prices we are selling our product at the price of 0 0.50 for one unit so let's get started with the solution first we would find out the sales so sales because it was given uh, in we were having the number unit number of units and we were having the selling price per unit so to convert in all the sales amount what we did we did the product of number of units into selling price per unit and we got our sales revenue that is dollar twenty five thousand moving to variable cost we were having number of units and we were having variable cost per unit so we converted it and we got the total amount of dollar ten thousand as our variable cost now we would use both these figures in our further calculation so as we know to the formula for degree of operating leverage is contribution by evit and to calculate contribution we were having the formula sales minus variable cost so when we deduct variable cost out of the sales whatever is left that is our contribution so here we have just put the figures and derived at our contribution which is dollar fifteen thousand and then evit EBIT was when you deduct all of your cost from your sales revenue whatever is left that is your earnings and that earning is before the interest and tax so obviously EBIT would be sales minus variable cost and fixed cost that is the combination of uh, uh, when we combined it would be total cost so when we deducted we arrived at the figure of 5000 this is our earning before paying any of the interest before paying any of the tax so degree of operating leverage was contribution by EBIT. We just put up the figures contribution. We were having 15,000 and EBIT was 5,000. So we appeared at three. This is the degree three is the operating level leverage degree in our business. Let's move forward to degree of financial leverage. So we were having the formula of EBIT divided by EBT and here we calculated EBIT as 5000 in our previous example only. So EBT now to arrive at EBT we have to deduct the interest expenses from EBIT. You can just simply by the name also you can infer the meaning earning before interest and tax and earning before tax. So you have to deduct interest from that. So EBIT minus interest expenses and this gave us a figure of EBT that was 3000 and for the formula for our degree of financial leverage was EBIT divided by EBT so just put up the figures and we arrived at 1.67 degree of financial leverage 
now we know that combined leverage was a product of operating as well as financial leverage so we just multiplied whatever we calculated as operating leverage and as financial leverage so 3 into 1.67 and we arrived at a figure of 5.01 so this was our degree of combined leverage now a brief interpretation the business is more leveraged because of the presence of fixed operating cost where the degree of operating leverage is 3 higher as compared to the financial burden of 1.67 so we have seen all the three figures where the operating leverage was 3 and our financial leverage was 1.67 and combined was 5.01 so talking about the two the operating and the financial we can see the operating is greater than financial leverage so we are occurring most of the fixed operating costs so we are paying more in salaries rents and the depreciation insurance whatever expenses that is fixed a uh, fixed operating in nature so more cost is incurred in that we need to have a control over there this interpretation we can make out of it and our financial leverage is 1.67 which is lower than degree of operating leverage as such there is not any fixed number which which is good for the business but it is measured in terms of the industry standards sets so whichever industry your business is running in whichever sec no, whichever sector then uh, you can compare the degree along with that sector along with the set standards of that industry or the sector Now talking about the percentage formula, so for all the operating financial and combined leverages we were having two formulas, one formula we have seen right now in all the examples, now we would see the percentage formula that was percentage change formula. So let's suppose with the same given data if you are required to find percentage change in EPS if EBIT increases by 5% and what happens if there is uh, increase of sales by 10% what would be the impact on the EBIT and what would be the impact on EPS if your sales increases by 10% so we would just use the percentage formula and we would get the answer for all these three questions. So see, we know that the formula for degree of financial leverage was percentage change in EPS by percentage change in EBIT. Now here, we have to calculate percentage change in EPS. We have already calculated degree of financial leverage which was 1.67 as you remember in the previous example we were looking at that and percentage change in EBIT is given 5. So we just have to multiply that putting the formula and we would get the percentage change in EPS which is 8.35 percent. Now talking about, the, talking about the next question which was to find out percentage change in EBIT if percentage change in sales is given. So we can use the formula for degree of operating leverage that was percentage change in EBIT divided by percentage change in sales. So just see we have just put down the values we were having operating leverage as 3 and our percentage change in sales is given 10 so we derived at the value of 30 percent by doing the multiplication a simple multiplication so if there is 10 percent change in our sales because of that 30 percent change is happening in our earning before interest and tax degree of combined leverage it was the formula was percentage change in EPS by percentage change in sales. So if we were required to find out the percentage change in EPS, if the sales percentage change is given, we have just multiplied it with degree of combined leverage. That is 5.01 into 10 and we arrived at the percent of 50.1%. So this is how we can use the formulas and derived at the result. Thank you for watching guys. I hope you liked my video. Do share and subscribe to my channel Devtake Finance. Thank you all.